Hello creators and welcome back. In this tutorial I'll show you how to make your NPC actually follow the player. So here we have our survivor following us through the field. Uh, now this method that I'm going to show you today has its limits. So for example if I jump over the fence our character is going to go immediately through that. Um, because our NPC is not aware of its surroundings. It does not know that it's walking um, inside objects it just follows the position of the player in one of the next videos i'm going to bring you a solution for that now it's not going to be perfect because uefn is very limited right now on what we can do with um, artificial intelligence um, but it will allow us to follow the player somehow and have it not go through objects right um, but in this video this is the way i'm gonna teach you in this first part, I'm going to teach you how to make your NPC actually move towards the player. But in the next one, I'm going to show you how to animate it. Um, so at the end of the video, we, you won't have your NPC um, moving its arms or whatever while moving. But without further ado, let's begin. To prepare the scene, you'll need to place a prop for moving around. And we'll call that translation prop. Then let's place another one, which we will call rotation prop. Next, let's bring in our NPC. And now what we're going to do is set rotation prop as a child of translation prop and our walking NPC as a child of the rotation prop. You'll see that both our rotation prop and our walking NPC are on top of our translation prop. And now when we move our translation prop, our NPC moves with it. And when we rotate our rotation prop, our NPC also rotates with it. Also remember to hide both your rotation prop and your translation prop from rendering in game. With that done, let's go to our verse explorer and create a new verse file so that we can write our script. So first of all, let's add the modules we'll be using. And in this case, we'll be using the characters and the spatial math modules. Now after doing that, let's define our class variables. So rotation prop and translation prop are just references to the props that we set in our scene. Units per second are the centimeters our NPC will traverse every second. So the higher the number, the faster our NPC will be. Maximum distance to player is the maximum distance the NPC will be from the player before moving closer. And finally, maybe player is just a reference that we set to our player. Now let's remember that this is for a single player experience. So if you want to make an NPC that follows players in a multiplayer game you'll have to use another method so the first thing we'll do is get a reference to our player so to do that we can use this function which gets the first player from the get players function and then sets it uh, to the maybe player variable now don't forget to call it inside the on begin function and now we'll have to create two functions one to make our npc look at the player and another one to make our npc move towards the player let's start with the first one We'll call it rotate to player and we'll actually be using a very similar code to my previous video. As you can see, first we get a reference to our Fortnite character, then we get the player's translation and the NPC's current translation, which are basically their positions. And with that, we can create a new rotation that the NPC will have to take in order to look at the player. And finally, we teleport our rotation prop to its current position so it doesn't move at all, but we set our new rotation. Now, as you can see, to get the current translation of the NPC, we use the translation prop and to set the rotation, we use the teleport to function on our rotation prop. This is very important to remember. We use the translation prop to move around our NPC and to find its position, but we use our rotation prop to rotate it, not the other way around. Now let's create the move to player function. Starting off very similar, we will also be getting a reference to our Fortnite character and then getting the position of the player and of the RMPC. Now let's calculate the distance from the NPC to the player by using the distance function. And finally, if distance to player is greater than the max distance that we said that the NPC has to be for, from the player in order to move, then that means our NPC should come closer to the player. To do that, we will use this function called the move to in our translation prop. Now this function will take three arguments. The first one is the position our translation prop will move to. The second one is the rotation that it will rotate to. And finally, seconds is the amount of time that it will take. So the first one is just the position to our player. But for the second one, we need a new rotation. Now you might think that we have to calculate again the rotation to the player. But remember, we only rotate our rotation prop. 
and this time we're using the move to function on our translation prop, so we don't have to rotate it at all. To do that, we'll just get the current rotation of our translation prop and set it here, so it doesn't rotate at all. And finally, for the amount of time it will take to move, we can calculate it by dividing our distance to player by the units per second. Now you'll see how it gives us an error. If we hover over this, we can read that the invocation calls a function that has the suspense effect. So our move to function has a specifier called suspense, which means that our function has to have the suspense specifier too. And there we go. Now it's fixed. Now to remind you, the suspense specifier means that our function is going to be asynchronous. Next, to actually make use of both of our functions, let's go back to our onBegin function and let's create inside of the loop. Now inside our loop, we'll rotate to the player, then wait until the next frame and then move towards the player. Now, our NPC will constantly look at the player until our NPC is far enough away that it needs to move towards the player. In that case, move to player will take some time and the loop will have to wait for it to finish. So in that time, our NPC will not be able to rotate to the player. Now you'll see it in game. Also, before starting your game, also before starting your game, don't forget to bring your device into the scene and then set the corresponding properties. Now, before starting your game, don't forget to bring in your device into the scene and then set the... Now, before starting your session, don't forget to actually bring the device into the scene and set all the attributes that we created. Now, for this example, I'm just going to set the units per second to 500 and the max distance to player to 1000. So the NPC successfully stares at us and if we get far enough away, it will start following us. But we can see some obvious mistakes, so we're going to have to fix that. Now to fix this, we'll have to stop our NPC from moving vertically. So we create a new variable called translation to player inside our move to player function. And this vector will be a copy of the player's translation, but with the C axis taken from our NPC. This basically gives us the position of the player, but at the same height as the NPC. Now let's replace the rest of the player translations to our new translation to player. Now let's rebuild our code and push our changes. Now, as you can see, the NPC still follows us, but now it's stick to the ground. Now, another thing that you might notice is that even though it's staring at the player at any moment, when it begins moving, it stays looking at the direction it was looking at before. So depending on the type of NPC that you want to make, you might want the NPC to keep staring at you even though it's moving. So I want to teach you that. So to achieve this, we have to go back to our loop on our onBegin function and put our move to player function inside of a spawn. Now what spawn does is let our asynchronous function run in the background while the rest of the code keeps executing. Basically, this makes it so that a loop doesn't have to wait for NPC to finish moving, which means that our rotate to player function will be called constantly, no matter if our NPC is moving towards player or not. Now, this creates another problem. If we don't wait for NPC to finish moving before running the loop again, this means that our move to player function will be also const called constantly, even though it's already moving. To fix this, let's create a new variable called isMoving which will either be true or false. Now inside our loop, let's make it so only if our NPC is not moving that we execute our move to player function. Also, let's set our is moving variable to true so that next time the loop runs, it doesn't execute the move to player function. But now again, if we leave it like this, our move to player function will never run again and it will only run once. So we need to set it to false once we know our NPC will be stopped. To achieve this, we'll be using something called defer. Now, what defer does is it will execute the code inside it once the program goes outside the scope it is in. So for our purposes, this means that whatever we put inside defer will execute once this function ends. So finally, we can set is moving to false inside defer. 
and we can rebuild our code and push our changes. And as you can see, it still stares at us and while it's moving, it will also keep looking at our position. So this is good for when you're trying to use 2D characters so that they're constantly looking at the player or if you're trying to implement something like next bots, right? So that's it for the video. Um, in the next one, I'll show you how to make your NPC display a walking or running animation while it's moving and an idle animation while it's not doing anything. I really wanted to upload more videos last week, but I just couldn't. I'm going to try to upload more videos on how to improve your NPC. It's very limited on what you can do at the moment, but I'm still going to try. Um, thank you so much for watching again. And if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave it in the comments. Thank you.